If I wanted to kill myself, I'd kill myself. I'd be awesome at it. A shotgun to the dick. Some things are funny no matter what decade it is. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest movie quotes of all time. Yeah, but tell me, so what's the charge? Possession of a concealed weapon and disturbing the peace. Disturbing the peace? I got thrown out of a window! What's the f***ing charge for getting pushed out of a moving car, huh? Jaywalking? For this list, we're looking at the most quotable and hilarious lines in movies from the 1970s to the mid-2010s. Where'd you find this gringo, man? The f***ing Mumford & Sons concert and shit? Number 10. The Judgment. Billy Madison. If peeing your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. Although we came close to awarding this spot to a certain pants peeing line, we simply could not deny one of the funniest insults of all time a place on this list. Nib high football rules! Subsequent to giving a passionate, powerful speech that results in resounding applause, Billy Madison is brought back down to reality by the principal's judgment. Mr. Madison, what you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. He doesn't just tell Billy that his answer is wrong. He flat out condemns Billy's words in the most mortifying, long-winded, and side-splittingly straight-faced way possible. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. It may be harsh, but in light of Sandler's more recent films, the criticism is well earned. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Number nine, I get older, they stay the same age, dazed and confused. You got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. <laughs> It'd be a lot cooler if you did. Up until the McConaissance, this line was easily Matthew McConaughey's greatest contribution to the art of cinema. In Dazed and Confused, McConaughey plays David Wooderson, a 20-something who still hangs out with high school teenagers. You just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. <laughs> <laughs> Although he may be getting on in years, Wooderson is eternally young at heart. We'll just overlook the fact that his shallow lifestyle is likely to land him in jail one day. In this scene, the laid-back hippie shares his philosophy on high school girls. That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> yes, they do. Aside from ha ha ha, all you can say to that is, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Number eight, a different kind of Iron Chef, super bad. She wants to f me, she wants my dick in and around her mouth. Superbad is another laugh-a-minute comedy where the one-liners fly by so fast that you need to watch it multiple times just to catch them all. I am McLovin. No, you're not. No one's McLovin. McLovin's never existed because that's a made-up, dumb fucking fairy tale name, you fuck! One particular quote that's etched into the halls of comic quotability, however, is Seth's game plan to become a sex god in time for college. Well, she's gonna be at the party, and she's gonna be drunk, and she likes me at least a little enough to get with me. While the rant is a riot on a writing level, it's the way Jonah Hill puts emphasis on the word vaj that elevates the line into a comedic league of its own. By the time college rolls around, I'll be like the Iron Chef of pounding vaj. Number seven, totally redeem yourself, dumb and dumber. It takes truly ingenious filmmakers to conceive dialogue that's so stupid and yet so smart at the same time. And the Farrelly brothers nail it. Dumb and Dumber is a model example, dishing out one big laugh after another. Hey, I guess they're right. Senior citizens, although slow and dangerous behind the wheel, can still serve a purpose. While Lloyd's inadvertently insulting comment towards senior citizens is one of his dumber moments, he proves himself even dumber when he trades the shaggin' wagon for a dinky moped. Where did you find that? Some kid back in town traded the van for it straight up. Then, just when it looks like Harry is going to prove himself slightly more intelligent than his companion, he delivers the film's absolute best line. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. 
and totally redeem yourself! <laughs> Number six. Welcome to the 21st century, Buck Rogers. This is the end. I was raised in a house of women! I highly doubt they f***ing taught you to f***ing close your eyes and f***ing come wherever you want! It brings together an assortment of this generation's funniest people. So how could This Is The End be anything short of a laugh riot? As Earth's remaining population slowly loses their patience, minds, and humanity. I mean, you're getting all worked up over a f***ing porno mag! They revert from being Neanderthals that jerk off to internet porn to Neanderthals that jerk off to magazines. Danny McBride's inability to keep it in his pants, and James Franco's discovery of his house guest's essence prompts this priceless line. Who has goddamn porno mags anymore? Welcome to the 21st century, Buck Rogers. You designed a house with f***ing iPads in the walls, yet you're jerking your dick like a goddamn pilgrim. Well, it's better than what would have happened if Emma Watson had stuck around. Hermione just stole all of our shit. Little bitty ass. 20-year-old jacked us. And then Jay suggested that we all rape her, and now she's gone. I, I didn't, I, I, I was just, I, I was... Number five, rude words, Team America World Police. Yes, Gary, yes. Remember when your mom said you shouldn't curse because it's rude and not funny? She lied. And it takes a pussy to show him that. Matt Stone and Trey Parker have been proving her wrong for decades, as the two have a gift for making brilliant political commentary in the most childish and disgusting ways. But sometimes pussies get so full of shit that they become assholes themselves. Nowhere is that better represented than in the climax of Team America World Police. Because pussies are only an inch and a half away from assholes. Delivering a passionate speech, Gary speaks a truth that every nation can understand. I don't know much in this crazy, crazy world. Well, what can you say to that, except God bless America? But I do know that if you don't let us f this asshole, we are gonna have our dicks and our pussies all covered in shit. Hello! Number four, your mother was a hamster, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Hello! Hello! Who is it? It was tempting to recognize a certain line from Life of Brian here. Oh. Now you listen here! He's not the Messiah! He's a very naughty boy! Now go away! But we simply had to give this spot to the taunting French guard from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. You are English type, sir! Well, what are you then? I'm French! Why do you think I have this outrageous accent, you silly king? We've heard some bizarre insults in our time, but only the comedic geniuses of Monty Python would ever think to compare someone's mother to a hamster and insult their father's elderberry stench. I fart in your gender direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. It's hard to explain just why this line makes people die with laughter every time, but we can't help but constantly quote it. Is there someone else up there we can talk to? No, now go away or I shall taunt you a second time. You get the motor, you keep your money, and I'll get your baby. Number three, bigger titties than you do, Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, ribs. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Nearly everything that emanates out of this fat bastard is a riot. He has just too many quotable lines to count. Yeah, huh? <laughs> I'm dead sexy. Look at my sexy body. Oh, yeah. His defining moment, however, has to be in this classic scene from The Spy Who Shagged Me, as he lets out why he's so unhappy on the outside and the inside. Of course I'm no happy. Look at me, I'm a big fat slob. Although we're supposed to feel sorry for him about his ample bosom, multiple chins, and a DOA Johnson, all we can do is bust a gut at his misery. I've got bigger titties than you do. I've got more chins than a Chinese phone book. I've not seen my willy in two years, which is long enough to declare I'm legally dead. And what could be funnier than a wholesome, down-home, good old-fashioned fart? Oh, God. Sorry, I farted. Number two, fit inside the building, Zoolander. Without much further ado, I give you the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good. The funniest line of the 2000s comes from one of comedy's most ingenious minds and dumbest characters. What is this? 
Upon the unveiling of a model for the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good and want to learn to do other stuff good, too, our title character is not impressed. A center for ants? Mistaking the small-scale model for the real deal, the fashion model throws a hissy fit that could only come from the world's most boneheaded diva. How can we be expected to teach children to learn how to read if they can't even fit inside the building? For Derek's vision to come to fruition, the center needs to be at least three times bigger. Clearly, Zoolander is all hair gel and no brain. I don't want to hear your excuses! The center has to be at least three times bigger than this. Before we unveil our top pick for funniest movie quote of all time, here are some honorable mentions. You've got to remember that these are just simple farmers. These are people of the land, the common clay of the New West. You know, morons. <laughs> Don't knock masturbation. It's sex with someone I love. You know, when you like you grab a woman's breast and it's and you you feel it and it feels like a bag of sand. Arthur, we really must be going. Thank you for a memorable afternoon. Usually one must go to a bowling alley to meet a woman of your stature. Pardon my French, but Cameron is so tight that if you stuck a lump of coal up his ass, in two weeks you'd have a diamond. Uh, I'm not, he's not, I'm not with him, sorry. Oh, all right. I'm glad he's single, because I'm gonna climb that like a tree. Number one, don't call me Shirley, airplane. Elaine, you're a member of this crew. Can you face some unpleasant facts? No. Touching down on runway number one is another priceless 80s line from Leslie Nielsen. Captain, how soon can you land? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. Up until then known as a dramatic actor, Nielsen's future as a comedic legend was set in stone with these immortal words. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. While the line itself will put a smile on anyone's face, it's the stone-faced way Nielsen says it with such solemn gravitas that causes the laugh-o-meter to skyrocket off the charts. But this plane has four engines. It's an entirely different kind of flying. All together. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different kind, kind of flying. flying. Because it's delivered just as straight as it would have been in a true disaster movie, Nielsen's line is all the more funny. How are the passengers doing? I won't deceive you, Mr. Stryker. We're running out of time. Surely there must be something you can do. I'm doing everything I can. And stop calling me Shirley. Do you agree with our list? 60% of the time, it works every time. What do you think is the funniest movie quote of all time? You know, you're in more dire need of a blowjob than any white man in history. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Everybody knows you never go full retard.